So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install this brand new engineered hardwood floor. This is gorgeous. It's hand scraped. It's a European hardwood. And we've got a supplier for you, so you're gonna be able to get this at a huge discount at the very end. You have to check it out, that information. Also showing you how to finish it off with the area vent system. It's a great way to get a good, clean, sexy look. All right, we got a lot to cover, a lot of tips and tricks. So let's just jump right into the whole installation thing without any YouTube fluff. Today, this video is all about the installation. So you're gonna need a couple of tools. One of them is going to be a floor nailer, okay? Now this is basically a hardwood nailing machine. This particular material isn't quite three quarters, which is standard for hardwood, but that's fine. It actually fluctuates between five eighths and three quarter install, so it works for no matter what situation you're dealing with. Comes with the hammer. You can rent that at your local hardware store. We get them at Home Depot, it's like 30 bucks for the whole day, which is more than enough time to get an installation done on a floor like this. The other thing you're gonna need is a brad nailer. Um, this one shoots an 18 gauge, two inch brad now. Really, we're only using this at the beginning and at the other end of the floor to do surface nailing underneath where the baseboards are gonna be installed, okay? <coughs> the only other thing you're gonna need, possibly a red bar just to help to manipulate and maneuver and put some pressure to close joints. It's nice to have handy and that's five bucks and everybody should own a red bar. <laughs> no excuse. Right, so the only other thing you're gonna need is a level. This is my trick for starting off the floor installation. What I do is I cut my first few pieces for the full length of the room and then I lay them in position and I use the level over where the joints are and I just help make sure that all my gaps are closed before I do my surface nailing, okay? Now I'm in a great position. I can hook up my compressor. Of course, that's the other tool you're gonna need if you're gonna use air tools. And we're just going to surface nail every three to four inches. All along the whole starter strip. The idea behind this is that should be enough resistance when we're nailing on the next row of the boards to keep everything from shifting around. Okay, so now we got the first row done. We're just gonna set this aside for later in the day because all we need is this beast. Now, so when you go and rent your machine, they're gonna sell you nails or staples to go with it. I've had this question a lot if I prefer the nails or the staples. And I am a staple fan. I love the fact that it's twice the fastener in the same location. It just seems to hold everything together right and tight. Okay, here we go. And, you know, just be smart. Don't load these things with your power hooked up. Here we go. Now we got air in that tool. The only other thing you gotta know is keep your area clean. Clean it then clean it, then clean it again, and clean as you go. <laughs> now, a lot of this installation is very similar to traditional hardwood, um, but because it's an engineered wood, you actually get to treat this like a floating floor in a lot of regards. New construction, our OSB subflooring is glued and screwed to the floor joists. We don't have the same kind of problems we're used to using dimensional lumber where the floors are all wavy. So we can just go ahead and install this the way that it's aesthetically pleasing. So although we're not going in the same direction, or sorry, contrary to the floor joists in this house, we're not concerned about it. This is going to stand the test of time. Now, to install, you simply line it up and you take your hammer, okay? The rubber mallet is used for impact here to create the impact power that you need to drive the staple. But the backside has got this slope. And what that does is it guarantees that the point of impact is beneath the tongue. And you're never gonna risk damaging the wood. So. There we go. Get that in place. Make sure you leave your gap all around the perimeter of the room. A real healthy gap is about a half an inch. And if your drywall is installed correctly, that's basically the distance of the drywall to the framing behind it. That makes life real simple. Bam. You want to install a staple every 12 to 16 inches. Try to be mindful if you're over a joint where there's a bunch of screws. 
You can even take a pencil and mark them in advance. This is not a race. Make sure your, your plate is set firmly on the ground. Okay, you don't want to have it rocking forward or lifting up. Now, you'll notice it doesn't take a lot of strength to use that tool. Anybody can install their own engineered hardwood. The only other thing you're going to need is some sort of a chop saw. It could be 10 or 12 inch, just so that you can cut the ends clean. And it's just as simple as measuring and cutting. Other than that, there's not a whole lot to know except for where to buy that stuff. <laughs> we'll get to that later in the video because we've actually set up a distribution network all over North America now. So we're going to be able to supply this product for you at a huge discount. So you're going to have to check out the description in the video below to find out where to get this. Now we'll talk more about the different products that are available and different stains and the different woods. But this is an amazing deal that's only available for our YouTube viewers. So let's get back to installing this. I'm going to have my son Matthew come in here and he's going to finish off this room. There are two things we're going to show. One is we're going to have to move the heat duct from one location to a little further down the floor. So we're going to do that on camera just because that's really great knowledge to have. We have engineered floor joists. And if you've never had to open a floor and do a repair in a situation like that, this video is going to cover that as well. And the reason we're moving is because this is going to be a walk-in closet. Now, I know, crazy, huge space. We've customized it. We've added really great lighting. And we're going to build our own custom cabinets for this place. And that video is coming up soon. So if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, then hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications, choose every time so that when that video comes out, you're going to get notified and you'll be able to see it. This is going to be spectacular because we're making it simple and affordable so that anybody can do this at home and then you don't have to have a huge shop set up with tools to do it. Okay guys, so here's the deal. Before we get back into the action, we're going to show you a few more installation tips and tricks. I want to just bring through the product. Let's talk about this real quick. The company's called Hardwood Global. They're importers of some of the finest hardwoods from all over the world, okay? And what we've got set up with them is distribution all through US and Canada for all of the products we're going to show you here. We're going direct from the manufacturers, importing it and bringing it straight to your home so we can get you an amazing deal. Now listen, if you're in the business and you've got products and you're manufacturing and you're looking for that kind of arrangement, then you need to email and contact us right now because I'm in the business of finding amazing deals for our viewers. Period. If I can get a product right from manufacturing to your home, we can cut out three or four steps of delivery and all that kind of jazz that just multiplies the cost of everything you buy. It gets ridiculous, so we're in the business of helping you out. Let's talk about a product real quick. What we're installing upstairs, which is Matt doing all that thumping around, is this stuff right here. Engineered hardwood, okay? Benefits of this over regular hardwood, it's still hardwood, but because it's engineered, it's built on layers, okay? These layers of different plywood is what gives it the strength and keeps it from warping. So we all know if you've worked with hardwood before, regular hardwood, you have to pay a real premium price to get wood that isn't warped. With engineered hardwood, you don't have that waste, so it keeps the cost down. It also has a nice little kerf line in the bottom there, which makes it a little bit more flexible for installing in older homes, all right? Which is brilliant. I'm loving this product. It has a really thick wear layer on top. A lot of the hardwoods that are out there, there's only enough room in there to do one sanding. If you're lucky in this situation, you can be confident. You can do one or two refinishings. If you want to change your color or your stain over time, no problem at all. And that is an awesome benefit. Okay. Comes in a variety of different colors and different woods. We have American oak. We've got a hickory. We've got other oaks over here. We've got different colors, light, dark, stain. But check this out. I'm going to show you an awesome product. Have you ever seen engineered hardwood like this before? <laughs> this stuff can come up to nine feet long. All right. It's insane. Now, that's again a three quarter, a huge wear layer, incredibly straight. I'm telling you right now, one of the benefits of this, where is that little piece there I can show? Boom, boom, right here. See that little metal rod there? This little metal rod does two things. One, it helps to keep it straight. Second, if you're sanding it, it shows you when you're through your wear layer. If you hit that metal rod, you don't want to have a, an experience where you're sanding your wood and you think everything is fine and you go and stain to find it blotchy because you've gone from hardwood to the softwood lumber underneath, okay? 
So that metal rod there is just to warn you, oh, you've gone too far, time to buy a new floor. But that won't happen for another 100 years, and that'll be somebody else's problem. The other thing they have, real quick, if you're a channel, fan of the channel, you've seen us install this vinyl floor. We have it installed over here in the kitchen area. I also did my kitchen back home. I'm doing my whole house. This is a vinyl plank. If you want to see this flooring installation video, you can click the card right here because this stuff is a dream. This scores and, and, and cuts with the utility knife. The simplest product I've ever worked with in my life has an amazing tight fitting joint at the end that you put together with a rubber mallet. Doesn't get any simpler than this. Again, all these products are straight from the importer or the manufacturer. They're available for you. Check out the link, go to our website, see if it's something that you're interested in. And if you do buy it, you've got an installation video to go with it. So all of these products are coming direct from the manufacturer or the importer straight to your home, which means a great savings for you. So click the link in the description below, follow along. And if you end up buying this product for use in your house, then it comes with the installation video. All right, such a deal. Now let's head back upstairs. We've got a few more tips and tricks for installing to show you. And we've got to move that register vent well, Matt did a great job. You got us almost all the way there. We're down the last couple rows. And like I mentioned, I've got to move this air vent back to a new location. So we're just going to use a combination of drilling a couple of holes, run the skill saw, jigsaw to finish off. We'll cut the vent back, reinstate it, patch the hole, boom. Then we'll get into the rest of the flooring. But I'm going to show you a brand new uh, floor grate system from Area Vent. We're going to introduce this with the hardwood here, which is going to be amazing. I used this before on my vinyl video in my kitchen. If you haven't seen that video and you're interested about vinyl flooring, then click the card that appears and that will lead you to that one. But <coughs> whoa, let's try not to be on hammer drill. Here we go. <laughs> We're going to finish moving this because in our design for this walk-in closet, we have a dresser underneath this window that comes out to 64 inches in total. So that runs us down to here. We're going to bring this over so it's inside the closed panel. Uh, this is probably going to be two separate rods. And then we can put a little deflector on the floor to draw the heat out into the room. There we go. And because we're flying a little blind here, we don't want to plunge everything too deep. We'll set the saw blades so we're cutting the thickness plus an oomph. There we are. And I'm going to be using that. All right. Now it's not always that easy to just open a floor and move a vent, but I happen to already be aware that there's a, uh, a support, big mechanical wall, sorry, downstairs right in this location. We opened up the floor earlier in the project to bring some electrical run up. So we already knew where all this ductwork was heading and what our allowances were. So I kind of had a little bit of insider knowledge. If you're not sure what's going on, just reach down. Okay, generally it's coming from one direction or the other. And then, uh, you can always open the floor and find out if it'll work for you. If not, buy a smaller dresser. Here we go. Whew. They sure used a lot of nails, eh? Nice. Okay. Here we go. Oh, we got lucky. There's only one screw. Yes. Okay. Right to there. So for everybody who hasn't seen this before, this is a new evolution in floor heating system. You open up the damper, it sets inside the existing grill. The 
<laughs> Yay. All right, so the area vent system has three components. You have the, the body that goes into the floor. Then you have this extension piece here. And that needs to be set at a certain height, equal to the thickness of the flooring. All right, well, actually, it's easier to see this way. Okay, there we go. And then it has this interior trough here. Now, the idea here is to cut a piece of the hardwood that fills this gap as well. So what you end up having is this beautiful little ridge all the way around that actually supplies the heat to the roof. All right. And the way that we set the height to be just perfect, so I use a little bit of my leftover flooring. The stuff here that we've got supplied, it's the same stuff we use in the, uh, the kitchen in the basin, kitchenette in the basement. It, it scores and snaps really simple. So it's really great to work with. Makes great shims. All right, there we go. Now that that's all done, we are going to uh, just finish cutting the rest of this in after I clean up. Time to get out the vacuum, because what's our number one rule? Clean, clean, and clean, right? Here we go. All right, so as per request, I'm gonna install the last piece just so everybody knows how it's done. Now, we're cutting measuring on a table saw, so if you don't have one of those, I'd suggest go ahead and rent one, because there's just no way to do this kind of finish quality unless you have a good quality table saw. All right, now, we really only have a couple of options for putting this in place. One of them is, when the baseboards are gone, you have these screws, and that's where the stud is. So that helps. Push this gap closed first, and then you can go like this. All right. And if that's not gonna work for you, now my son invented this technique, so stay with me, because that boy is always looking for better ways to do something. He just throws a square in here, and he pries against the whole width of the wall. That makes it about as tight as it can possibly get. And it actually reduces the risk of breaking up the edges. Once you've got that in place, no more surface nailing. Now we put in the body for the area vent. Oh, let's get that in there. Sometimes when you're this precise, you can run into issues. There we go. Wow. And the last finishing touch, drop this on, and then it slide locks. There we go. That's how you finish the flooring. The only thing you have to do now is just take the baseboards, clean the nails out, reinstall the baseboards, caulking line, and you are good to go. That is basically one full day's work. Let's just be honest, you can do a little faster if you've got some experience, someone who can help you. But if you're on your own, you can remove carpet and install a product like this in one day all by yourself. Now, if you'd like to see some other kind of flooring installations that we have, then make sure you can click the link right here. We've got some other flooring, some hardwood and tile and vinyl options. My goodness, there's no other, nothing out there but choices. 